Catherine, did she do enough to get business back on side? Well, good evening, Ian. I think her rhetoric was very uh, good, the tone was very good, but uh, there, there are elements there to be concerned about. And I think when we look at the energy cap, we need to look very carefully to make sure that it's actually carried through to the ultimate customer. Yeah, very odd that we've had a lot of rhetoric from the Conservatives this week in praise of free markets after the dire traps we heard at Labour last week, and then she goes and does this. Mm, interventions do need to be looked at extremely carefully. And I have to say, I, I'm also very concerned that we didn't hear anything more positive on the question of Brexit. We heard some positive uh, remarks about the free trade agreements we're going to strike and welcome for the um, overseas workers here. That's great, but we do actually need to see more than warm words these days. We do actually need to see progress, particularly on those questions of people, transition and access to trade. Well, so we would have liked more. Let me bring you in at this point. I mean, a lot of uh, people saying afterwards, this is, you know, she's basically stolen Ed Miliband's clothing with uh, great passages of this speech. But would you give her credit for that? Well, there certainly is some plagiarism, uh, not just from Ed Miliband, from Jeremy Corbyn last week. Um, look, Theresa May made this huge deal about tackling burning injustices when she came uh, to power last year. And actually, her record has been very poor. It's been the opposite. And something like workers and boards, for instance, that she said that she wanted to happen, those, those have been uh, watered down. Those proposals have been watered down. It's not happening um, on poverty, on food banks, on impacts on what she calls vulnerable people, like um, communities of colour, have been very poor from austerity. She's actually been doing the opposite. So it's interesting to hear business is not happy. But those of us fighting for equality, aren't happy either. So she's actually really failed big time. But would speech. you give her any credit for the fact that she's going to start building council houses again? Look, I mean, it's, it's good. And again, there are these weird contradictions about free market. And it's good that she's recognising that there needs to be intervention. Housing market is certainly somewhere where actually it's failed to deliver for people. It's become more of a matter of assets rather than a matter of shelter. So certainly, but when you look at the things that she's saying versus what Labour is saying it's either unclear or it's watered down. So she's not going far enough in some cases. That even the energy cap, it's not clear what's going to happen there. We'll see next week. But at least with the Labour Party, it's very clear what they're saying out. They're talking about public ownership. They're talking about price caps. I mean, let's see next week. But honestly, I think that most of what she will say will be watered down. And why would anyone trust her? She's rolled back on everything she said last year. Catherine, what do you make of that? Well, we do need to look at the detail. I would welcome what's been said on housing. Again, that's something which is very much needed, um, not just for those who are having difficulty affording homes, but actually we're finding people are having trouble uh, in the city, um, the, the workers that we need to depend on. Um, so we welcome the moves on housing, but we need to see spades in the ground. Yeah, I mean, the, the odd thing here, though, is that she's committed £10 billion to help to buy an extension of George Osborne's thing, basically which just stoked up demand. I mean, £2 billion buys basically, if you... Mm price houses at £200,000 each. That's only another 10,000 homes. It's well, not a lot, is it? It's a start, and it's a very big issue which we really need to tackle. And indeed, we in the City Corporation are going to be making our own contribution to that, as, as our other London authorities. It is, it is one of the biggest challenges that faces um, our uh, working population at the moment, the housing question. Pfizer mentioned workers on boards. I imagine there'll be a lot of people in the city breathing a sigh of relief that Theresa May hasn't gone through with that. I think people are very concerned to hear the stakeholder voice and to look at uh, ways in engaging stakeholder voice. Uh, most businesses that I talk to would prefer to see uh, something which encourages listening to the voice rather than absolutely stipulating, laying things down in, in law. But I think we're all very keen to explore uh, the best method of, of corporate governance. Mm. But, Fraser, on this point of house building, I mean, what makes you think that the state will be any better at building homes than the private sector? Well, look, there's been huge... Uh, the way in which the system works right now is this very strong incentive to have profit. So we heard Corbyn speak about last last week about changing the incentives of the system, how we build affordable housing, how we use public money um, to make sure that we are not having a kind of profit-only system, which has led us to this point where housing is incredibly unaffordable for the majority now. So it's not just those on low incomes, but even those working in the city, which is hard to believe. Um, so, you know, there is a clear case, a clear, clear case for public intervention. And what's really interesting is how much I was at the Tory party conference this week, how much Corbyn and Corbynism was setting the agenda there. They are clearly quite spooked. They clearly don't have the answers. So they're taking some of what he's saying and watering it down 
down. It just actually just doesn't make sense. You either go with intervention or you make the case for free markets and they're in this weird middle ground. So everyone's confused. Business is confused. I'm confused. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's a fair point, isn't it, Catherine? I mean, they really do need to give a full-throated defence of free markets and we just didn't get that from the PM today, I did think she was fairly... Um, strong in what she said but as I say again we really need to see some action for business and I mean it was pleasing that she recognised the contribution that business makes to society and the economy uh, but we need to see absolute clarity and particularly at this critical moment we need to see some real movement for business for the financial related professional services on, on, on Brexit and on transition and people. What about local governments? Obviously the City of London Corporation is one of the most powerful local authorities in the land. I mean, do you think the central government could be talking to you more? They speak uh, these days, actually, since the election, we have a very good conversation. But I do think we need to be exploring more devolution to local levels uh, so that local um, uh, at the local level you can look at skills, you can look at... Um, the issues that you have for your particular community. But I have to say we are finding that there's an open conversation these days on the big questions facing the sector, particularly on Brexit, but we're not seeing the progress that we need. All right, last word to you, Pfizer. I mean, Catherine mentioned uh, Brexit at the outset. Did you hear much there that excited you today? No, it was very vague. Again, I just don't get the sense of a real vision here and where we're going in terms of any concrete proposals. And it's really worrying at such a critical time for this country when we should be recalibrating the economy, we should be bringing people inside, and we should be addressing inequality. All right, Pfizer Shaheen. Catherine McGuinness, thanks both.